welcome back to another Keyless Getting Started video. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to run a very simple pipeline, CI/CD pipeline using GitLab. So GitLab is a web-based DevOps lifecycle tool that provides a Git repository manager, which allows you to run jobs. Each of these jobs has a, a JOT, a JSON web token, that is provided as a CI/CD variable, which we have in our code, and we'll show you how that's used. And before we actually get started with the uh, actual CI CD pipeline job, uh, there are some prerequisites which we need to go through. So first we have uh, the authentication that is required for these jobs. So what we're going to do is start by creating a new auth method. And I already did this. You can create an auth method just by doing what we've done in the past. You choose new, in this case OAuth 2.0, 2.0 or JOT, and you're going to add the uh, JSON web key um, URL here for GitLab, as well as a unique identifier, which here is the user login. And that is in order to authenticate because when you use this type of authentication method, what it does is it issues a subclaim, and that subclaim is uh, a unique identifier for that specific user, and it's a way for companies to distinguish between different users in the same organization. And you're also going to create your access role. So here you can see the access role I created where I gave the correct permissions that are required here, as well as making sure to add in the subclaim when I associate my auth method, where I add my login for from GitLab. So my login is Jeremy1952509. So you need to make sure to add that subclaim in as well, which of course matches the unique identifier we set earlier. So the next step is actually integrating a keyless with GitLab. And so to do that, here is a basic YAML file and I'll show you what I did here for this example. So in this example what we have is two files, very simplified example. I have a bash script that I'm going to use to create to make a change to a MySQL database and I have the GitLab CI YAML which is the uh, file which will automatically run the job once there's a change made in the repo. So you can see simply the repo starts by pulling up our CI base um, Docker image um, and once it does that, what we're doing here is we're actually taking a few different pieces of information from a key list. So MySQLDS is a dynamic secret for MySQL that we created in a previous video. The private key, which we're going to use for SSHing into our remote machine in order to update MySQL, is saved under the secret name Jeremy Demo. That's a regular static secret. And I just added for fun the remote host here, which is uh, something that could change. Usually it doesn't change, but um, it's just a remote host of the uh, location of the EC2 instance that I'm going to be connecting to by via SSH. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, authenticate with the access ID as I showed before, and we have the JOT as well. This next uh, script actually just runs some commands to pull the secrets from a key list that we mentioned previously. And the next thing we're going to do is actually create a variable here called LC user, which is going to grab just the ID from the dynamic secret, because as we know, dynamic secrets have an ID as well as a password. And so we're going to pull just the ID into LC user, just the password into LC pass. The next thing we're going to do is grab the base64 encoded um, Jeremy demo secret, and we're going to decode it and put it into a PEM file. We're going to chmod that pem file, of course, and we're just going to show our username and password here just uh, for the um, so that we have a way to log in and show the changes that were made. Uh, and that, of course, only lasts 60 minutes. So by the time you see this video, it will be expired. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our employee.sh file. We're going to copy it into the remote host. And after that, we're going to SSH into the remote host, passing on the environment variables here. And we're going to run the employee.sh script. So quickly showing the employee.sh script. This would be hypothetically where you would make any changes to the MySQL database that you want. So here we see the MySQL database with the username that's being passed, the password that's being passed, and then the commands that you are going to run in 
uh, uh, in MySQL. So once everything's in place, you're ready to go ahead and get running. And the next thing we're going to show is the secrets here that we have. So we have our Jeremy demo, which is the private key information. We have the MySQL dynamic secret, which we'll, we'll use to generate a dynamic secret for MySQL. And we have the remote host saved here as well. The last thing we're going to show is the actual database. Currently, we can see the database. We have an employee database with six current employees. And what we're going to go ahead and do is add an employee to that list, to that just joined the company. So if we go back to our employee.sh file, all I have to do is go ahead and edit this. And I'll go ahead and add a new employee. And once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and click Commit Changes. And this could be done from anywhere as well. It could be done from VS Code, whatever is easier for you. I'm just, for simplicity's sake, showing how it's done from within the repository. And if I go ahead to Jobs, and I click on the running job, I can go ahead and see that it is going to start running the job here, and it should update our MySQL database to show and reflect our latest employee joining. Great, and we see that the database employees was updated. So if I go back, and you see here the temporary username and password here. So let's go ahead back into our terminal. Go ahead and add the temporary user that we just created. And enter the password here. And once we're logged in, we can simply run use employees to use the employees database and select from employees. And here we see our final seventh employee was just added to that database. So that is how we can run the GitLab plugin in order to inject secrets into your CI/CD pipeline securely. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.